So, some of you may or may not remember that a little while ago, at the beginning of my carnivore journey, my husband had kidney stones and he went for his checkup on Tuesday. Let's get into it. Hello everyone. So I'll do a little bit of a recap about to the second week of my carnivore journey. Husband came and sat on my side of the bed, clutching his side high up, turned out to be kidney stones, right? And that kind of sent me down a really big rabbit hole of oxalates. Okay, so anyway, so when he went that day, obviously had a scan and they found a rather little kidney stone in his, is it urethra? In that little tube. And, um, you know, there were various little kidney stones in his kidneys, right? So about a month after that, he went for the second scan, okay? And it's probably taken about six, seven weeks for him to actually go and have the appointment about that second scan to find out whether the stone is gone, he's passed it or whatever. So I have to sort of tell you what happened in that month. I mean, literally the day he came back from hospital when he first went in with the pain, um, the first thing that left the house was all the sugary drinks. We're talking Coca-Cola, vanilla Coke. You know, I was drinking Pepsi Max up until the 1st of January. So that stuff went as well. Um, he was also drinking some stuff that's like mineral water with like um, fruit juice in it. A lot less sugar than um, Coca-Cola, admittedly, but still sugar nonetheless the other thing was that he was a you know used to often buy big things of orange juice apple juice so those things went by the wayside as well in that month and um in addition to that all the lollies the chips the chocolate gone you know, it, 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 my mentality at the time was, it's all right to have those things, but they're not meant to be consumed to the degree that this family has been consuming them. Just not. I mean, best case scenario, just don't consume them. But there you have it, you know. So, you know, my husband did keep one or two things and, you know, oh, he got about, he got rid of about all up with the sugary drinks, you know, the orange juice and, and uh, apple juice and the sweets and lollies and chips and, and chocolate and stuff like that. I would say he probably got rid of about 95% of it. All right. Now, the other thing that changed was the fact that, well, I wasn't eating vegetables at that point wasn't even eating fruit so that was a that was a no-brainer the dishes that contained rice or pasta significantly reduced but the meat that he was eating increased so i'm guessing you want to know what happened when he went for his checkup given that the time frame between his very first scan and his second scan is about a month apart. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my husband doesn't have any kidney stones whatsoever. They're gone. Completely gone. Do with that information what you will. All right. Now, the second part of this video is going to be tailored more to the, okay, we've been on this thing for three months. 
how much have I learned? Now, why do I say that? <laughs> because my husband was sent home with this little nugget. He came home and went, you're going to love this. He wasn't wrong. It is the information that they generally give a kidney stone patient upon leaving that second appointment, if you like. Now, the thing is, they weren't actually able to tell my husband which kind of kidney stone that he had, because there's a few different kinds. And, um, and I sat here and I said, well, of course they didn't because they didn't open you up to actually grab one to do a test on it anyway. So how could they tell you? But he got to about, when he read this, he read about one and a half pages of it and decided, yeah, nah, we're not doing this. But anyway, I thought I would share this information with you guys because I have read it and I just, some of it I laughed not going to lie. First of all, the, the headline is that it's the dietary advice for stone formers. Information about your condition from the British Association of Euro Urological Surgeons. So it's not information from Australia. That's fine. But they couldn't, they didn't pull the information from any kind of institution here. I found that kind of odd, but you know. So buckle up, I'm gonna do some reading. You have been given this leaflet because you have been diagnosed with urinary stones. The aim of this leaflet is to provide you with advice on how to modify your diet and fluid intake to reduce your risk of getting further stones. We have consulted specialist surgeons during its preparation. So it represents best practice in UK urology. You should use it in addition to any advice already given to you. And then it gives you a link. I'll put the link in the description box below. The key points, ladies and gentlemen, are specific types of stones can be managed by measures aimed at the cause of your stone formation. Generally keeping your urine dilute and colourless reduces your risk of forming a further stone by almost one third. In addition, a normal calcium, brace yourself, low salt, low protein dietary intake can reduce your risk of stone formation even further. I'm just going to let that one sink in. How much do I need to drink? Drinking plenty of fluid is the most effective way of preventing stone formation and reduces your risk of stone formation by almost one third. Not drinking enough can cause your urine to become concentrated, making stones more likely to form. There's, there's, there's probably some truth in that. Try to drink two to three litres of fluid, water or squash. Now, I just want to point out here, my mem given that this is a British publication, my knowledge of squash is what we would call cordial here in Australia. All right. Now, we know here in Australia that cordial can range from the fully sugared version to the diet version, which God knows what else is in that. Am I right? So they're condoning the use of squash. And I mean, you know, to what degree? Sure. You know, if you're putting just a little bit in there just to take the taste of the plain water away, probably I'd say go for it. But condoning sugary squash, sugary, I don't know. Excuse the bird in the background. He has something to say, obviously. You should aim to keep your urine colourless throughout the day. This should give you a urine output of at least two, two litres per day. If you have cysteine, sounds very chapel like, stones, you will need to drink enough to produce more than four litres of urine a day. Now, remember that. Remember that part. I'll get to why 
I have a problem with that in a minute. But if you've already picked up what the problem might be, comment below. I'd be interested to see. You can drink tea, coffee and alcohol in moderation, but most of your fluid intake should be water or squash or cordial. We recommend that you drink one or two glasses of water before going to bed. If I had one or two glasses of water going before bed, I'd be up all night having a piddle. And upon getting up in the morning. Tips to help you increase your fluid intake. Drink a large glass of water at specific times of the day. Keep a bottle or jug of water by your side all day. You can flavour it with fruit squash. Try to drink one glass of water every hour. Add slices of lemon, lime or orange to cold water. This gives it a pleasant flavour and helps it and helps to make your urine less acidic. Hang on a minute. I thought lemon lime and orange were acidic fruits did i get it wrong aren't they acidic fruits oh no comment below please let me know eat oh here we go folks here comes the wackiness eat more fruit and vegetables because they contain a lot of water and include moist liquid foods in your diet. Soup, stew, and jelly. Mm. Does what I eat influence stone formation? What you eat is not as important as how much you drink, but it does play a part in stone formation. It is essential to have a well-balanced diet, avoiding too many calories. This should include fresh fruit, salad, vegetables, low fat dairy produce, and whole grain products such as breads or cereals. Yeah, I'll just leave that with you. A high fiber intake is helpful, although you should not eat wheat bran because of its high oxalate content. Is calcium in my diet bad for my stones? I kind of know the answer to this one, just a little bit. Interestingly, reducing the amount of calcium in your diet can increase the risk of stone formation by raising oxalate levels in your urine. I did know that because of carnival. A daily intake of up to a thousand milligrams per day is safe for calcium stone formers. Most dietary calcium is found in dairy products, milk, yogurt, cream, and cheese. A normal varied diet will give you about 500 milligrams of calcium each day. The approximate calcium contents of dairy produce are milk and yogurt, soft cheese, and hard cheese. If you have too much calcium in your urine, you may benefit from restricting your calcium intake but you should discuss this with your urologist, specialist nurse, or GP. Does oxalate intake play a part in stone formation? Yes. You should try to avoid oxalate rich foods to keep the oxalate levels in your urine at a normal level. You should avoid eating rhubarb, celery, spinach, beetroot and sesame seeds, all of which have a very high oxalate content. Black tea, chocolate, nuts, including peanut butter, cocoa and carob are all moderately high in oxalate. You should take them in moderation, but you do not need to exclude them completely. Should I restrict my salt intake? Yes. Salt contains sodium and a high sodium intake increases calcium stone formation. Do not add salt to your food at the table. Use pepper, herbs, spices or vinegar as alternate, uh, alternative flavorings. You can, however, add a small amount of salt to your food during cooking. 
you should limit your sodium intake to between 2,300 to 3,000 milligrams per day. This is equivalent to five to six grams, one teaspoon of salt. Try to eat foods with a low salt content. Avoid tinned, packed or processed foods, e.g. soups, which they mentioned that you could have previously. Salted crisps or nuts, tinned meats, meat paste, smoked fish and fish paste, all of which have a high salt content. Now, let's go back to the amount of water that they are advising you to have. Now, I don't know much, but I've always known that drinking too much water can dilute the electrolytes a little bit too much. And you need to make sure you're replenishing the electrolytes. So if they're advising kidney stone patients to drink more water, which is valid, because we could all use drinking a little bit more water, why are they saying that these electrolytes, that taking salt out, when it's, it's we need it, we all do. Um, when you're drinking that much water and you're dilute, diluting your electrolytes, your minerals, which by what I understand, minerals are not naturally occurring in the body. You got to put them in there. You know, you've got your salt, you've got your magnesium and you've got your potassium. You don't naturally make those. So you got to put them into your body. If I'm wrong in any of this, please comment below because this is an educational process for me at this point in time. I'm not a doctor, straight up. I'm not interested in actually being one. There are some things that we're going to come across that, you know, I'm always going to say the same thing. Go to Dr. Berry. Go to Dr. Chaffee. I don't know. I may know, but I'm always, when it's a medical thing, I'm always going to say, go to your first port of call there, go to a doctor, search on their channel and look up the information. Is there anything else I can do to help myself? It is important to reduce your weight if you are overweight. Valid. Increased physical activity should be part of any weight reducing program. Remember to drink plenty of, of fluid and avoid getting dehydrated if you sweat a lot during exercise. Now that, that is valid. Valid. Calcium phosphate stones. Here we go. We're getting into the different kinds of stones now. I think we've... Just, have we done these ones yet? Okay, so the different types of stones, all right? Is there anything I can do to prevent certain types of stones? Calcium oxalate stones. And there is a bit of a picture here. They look like some nasty, nasty ones. Only 10 to 15% of oxalate stones in your urine comes from dietary intake. It is not, therefore, necessary to eliminate oxalate-containing foods completely from your diet. You should, however, aim for a moderate and sensible intake of oxalates. Now, by what I've understood is that one of the reason, one of the things that we get when we go on a carnival diet is that we are eliminating pretty much all of those oxalates. And what happens is we end up having what is known as oxalate dumping. And that can range from all sorts of things happening. You know, you've got stuff coming out of your eyes, muscle pain, just all sorts of stuff that can happen. And they do say that, you know, having a little bit of oxalates can actually help reduce those symptoms a little bit. Um, but that's just what I've come to understand. Again, you know what? Discuss below. This is what we're here for. You know, there are some people in on my subscriber list that are just brand new to this. I'm hoping that you guys that are new to this are scouring the internet and YouTube for this information. It is valuable information that you need to take up the charge and self-educate. Don't rely on monkey see, monkey do. Okay, she's doing this. I'm going to do exactly that educate yourself first because that education is part of that hairpin learning curve all right
That's my advice to you. All right. Foods which are especially high in oxalates should be consumed sparingly. The following, here we go. The following foods are known to have high oxalate contents. So now we've got all the things that they mentioned in the previous list. Where is it now? They listed, wet up, wet up. Oh, where is it? Chocolate was one of them. Cocoa was one of them. And so now they're actually putting all of those things that they even said were moderately, they put them in this, in this list of just straight out high. Tea, coffee, nuts, sesame seeds and nut products, products, cocoa and chocolate, some fruits like figs, tangerines, plums, berries and currants. Rhubarb, soy products. Don't even get me started on talking about soy. Not doing that tonight tofu, soy milk, soy cheese, and soy ice cream. Some vegetables, celery, spin thank God spinach is on there. Of all the lists of oxalate foods that I've seen, spinach is right at the top of that list. It's something crazy like, you know, the baby spinach, like five little, little leaves of baby spinach is equivalent to maybe having two great big florets bulbs of broccoli you would have to have like two great big bowl for, like two you know the big florets of of the broccoli you'd need to have two of those to equate to the same amount of oxalates of five little baby spinach leaves five again not a doctor if i'm wrong comment below but every list i've seen in three months has had spinach right at the top so i'm grateful that spinach is on the top of this list. So I'm going to take that as a win. Leeks, okra, bleh, hate okra, parsley, and beetroot. So that's the calcium. Uh, uric acid stones. <clears throat> You're going to love this one. You should try to limit your dietary intake of purines. Brace yourself. These are naturally occurring chemicals found in most foods which are broken down by the body into uric acid. The main dietary sources of purines are, hang on, brace yourself, meat, all meat, including liver, heart, kidney, sweetbreads and meat extracts, for example, oxo and bovril fish especially anchovies crab fish roe herring mackerel sardines shrimps and whitebait others beer asparagus cauliflower mushrooms peas beans and spinach uric acid levels are often higher in people who are overweight so losing weight can help you depending on how you do that will depend on how much you're dumping of the oxalates i'm just saying <clears throat> taking the drug allopurinol which lowers uric acid levels in the bud blood pardon me has not been shown to help in reducing the risk of uric acid stone if you are diabetic good control of your blood sugars can also reduce the risk of uric acid stones um, do we need to talk about the squash that they're telling us to put into our water? Do we need to talk about even the diet squash or cordial that they're telling us to put in our water and the nasties that are in the aspartame, the maltodextrin and the sugar spiking of the insulin? Do we need to talk about that from that one? statement alone do we do we need to go there no i don't think we do um here we go so if uh, read it again if you are diabetic good control of your blood sugars can also reduce the risk of uric acid stones next paragraph calcium phosphate stones chain dietary changes have little effect on the formation of calcium phosphate stones all the general advice above is valid, but you should avoid taking anything to alkalinize your urine. 
Remember that statement about diabetics and getting your blood sugars under control? Mm -hmm. Cranberry juice may be beneficial because it acidifies your urine and lowers urine oxalate levels slightly. Last I checked, cranberry juice was full of sugar. As natural as it may be, still full of sugar. Struvite, triple phosphate stones. Simple based measures remain the most important way of preventing cystine stone formation. Increase your fluid intake. You must drink enough fluid to produce two to three litres of urine per day. This usually means you need to get up at night to drink water. Ain't nobody got time for that. Modify your diet. Reduce your intake of methanine from which cystine is, cystine is formed by cutting your animal protein intake. Well, I don't have time for that. Alkalinize your urine. This encourages cystine to dissolve in your urine. We normally do this using potassium citrate. Oh, wait a second. Isn't that one of the electrolyte minerals that's in LMNT and all the other ones that, and the one that I'm going to make? This tastes unpleasant, but some patients can tolerate it by flavoring it with fruit juice. Monitor your urine acidity using special pH dipsticks to be sure that your urine stays alkaline. Your urologist or specialist nurse can supply you with these. I mean, what can you say? Says one thing and it doesn't even get to the other end of the page before it contradicts itself. And whereas my husband may have increased the amount of water he's drinking, gotten rid of the sugary drinks, increased the meat, at the end of the day, he went from having a kidney stone in his urethra and kidney stones in his kidneys. And a month later, just making some very small changes he doesn't have any kidney stones at all. This? At best, it's comedy value. And it's a, a representation of anybody else that isn't on, hasn't got the education of a, a carnivore diet is going to read this and take this as gospel. There are some valid points in this, I'm not going to lie. But then they go ahead later on and just totally contradict what they've just said. You know, they're saying reduce the sugar and yet they're condoning the drinking of like things like cranberry juice for various different other stones and, you know, having cordial or squash. How? I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it. Um, I would seriously, seriously love, love, love to hear from you on this. I would love some comments below. Um, I, as I said, I will put the link to this article in the comments, uh, sorry, in the description box below. Go and have a read and go and have a look. But yeah, this worries me that this is being given to people as advice for kidney stones. I don't know. Cut out the veg, cut out the cut out the sugar, cut out the fruit, eat more meat, and off you go. That's what I say. Because this is just mm, Nah. Nope. Nope. Just all the things no. So that's my midweek video. I don't know whether you enjoyed it or not. The midweek videos, eh, they're hit and miss. And that's fine. I enjoy doing them. So I'm going to continue to do them. I will finish by saying, be kind to those around you.
Don't take any crap. Protect your peace. And be kind to yourself. Until Monday. Night-night, folks.